In this video, we are going to see how to set up an interactive object. In order to do that, we are going to go back inside Unity. I'm here inside the scene that you can also uh, download inside our package. And uh, we have an apple that we turn into an interactive object. And we are going to use it to see how to set up an interactive object. For the moment, we just turn our apple into an interactive object. So we are going to see how to set up this apple together. So let's take a look at the inspector on the right. So we can see that we have an element, a component called interactive object. And you can see the logo of Zoe. So if I scroll a bit, I can see that um, there's a section called interactive object setup. Here I can do a couple of things already. I can check the affected by gravity parameter, which as the name says, it will add gravity to our apple. So for the moment, if our apple doesn't have gravity, it means I can place it anywhere in the scene, like it can be floating in the air. And if I press play, my apple is going to stay in the air because there is no gravity. And so if I add the gravity to the apple, if I put my apple up in the air and I press play, you can see that the apple is still floating in the air because we didn't add the gravity. So now I'm going to add gravity to the apple and I'm going to press play again. And you can see that the apple is falling. If I try to drag the apple, it's falling on the ground. So it's affected by gravity, basically. If you are familiar with Unity, this is something that we can find in the rigid body component of our apple. This is something uh, pretty common inside Unity. And here we can also see the use gravity for the moment it's not checked because I uncheck it here. But if I check the gravity, it will be also checked inside the rigid body. Now let's continue to look at our interactive object and what we can do. We can enable manipulation and we can enable drag and drop. So let's see what it means to enable manipulation. If we want to be able to manipulate our interactive object, we need to check this parameter enable manipulation. And as you can see, we now have more options that appeared. We have a minimum distance. We can choose between grab, point and click and levitate. Remember, we saw that uh, we have several colliders, colliders attached to our interactive object uh, that are that are working with this manipulation mode. So grab, point and click or levitate. And we have an attraction speed. So the first thing is um, the minimum distance is the distance from uh, the interactive object that the user needs to be in order to uh, be able to manipulate it. So if I put two meters, I need to be maximum two meters away or less from the apple to be able to interact with it. If I'm 10 meters away, I won't be able to interact. I won't be able to manipulate it, sorry. But if I'm like two meters, one meter or closer, I will be able to manipulate it. So the grab option, so an object can be grabbed by the user. And we have a couple of uh, parameters with the grab mode. We can check snap. So it means that if we check that snap option, when we grab the object, it will snap basically to the position we defined earlier. In, in, a, in another video, we saw all the colliders that are attached to our interactive object. We have the snap option. So if we check the snap option, the object will snap to the controller based on a specific point on that game object. So think about it if we have so, for example, if we have a sword, we would like to, when we grab the sword, that the, our controller snap to the handler of the sword instead of the blade, for example. And so if we activate the snap option and we define the snap position on our object, in that case, on the handler of the sword, for example, when we we'll grab it, it will snap where we wanted it to be. And we have also an attraction speed parameter that is basically the speed uh, to which the object we are grabbing goes to our controller, you know. So if the attraction speed is, is 10, it will go at uh, maybe 10 meters per second. And we put 100, it's going to, to, we are going to grab the object much faster. And we put less, it's going to be less fast. But this speed needs to be at least free, otherwise it's not going to work. Then we have the point and click that will detect when our laser so inside our Unity project, when we are in VR, we have basically two lasers coming from each of our controller, one laser per controller. And if we choose this manipulation mode called point and click, it will detect when this laser is touching 
the object. And finally, we have the levitate manipulation mode. It's a mode that uh, we mainly use when we cannot move in VR. So let's say for some reason, cannot move really in your VR scene. For example, if you're in mixed reality, you want to use the levitation option that will let you be able to move an object from a distance without getting there and kind of touching it. And finally, we have the enable drag and drop option. We will have a full section about the drag and drop system. What I can tell you for now is that this drag and drop systems work with target as well. It means that you have to select another object to be the target for this drag and drop system to work. So if you think about it, maybe we have a basketball, we have a basketball hoop. And so if you want to enable the user to drag and drop the basketball into the basketball hoop to create some special uh, interaction, let's say, we need to add the basketball hoop object inside this drop target section. In the next video, we'll see how to create an interaction. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.